Well, you've probably heard of supercapacitors. If you haven't heard of supercapacitors, it's sort of like a fast energy charging system. It's a system that can accept electricity very quickly and discharge electricity very quickly. The limitation is on supercapacitors maybe how much electricity can they store as an aggregate amount like a battery. Uh, that's been somewhat of the limitation, but they've been coming up with new ways to uh, get around that. You see, the reason this is very, very important is because um, the um, what's going to happen is the uh, electrical cars and things that we have that are coming out that take so long to be charged up, they'll take a lot of time, maybe several hours, or they need special outlets to charge up the batteries. And even like your small devices like your cell phone or your laptop, like your cell phone, if the battery's discharged all the way, it might take a few hours or something. And with a supercapacitor, it can actually take just a matter of minutes. It, it's down to a tiny fraction of the time. Now, there's other. This, this is where uh, graphene is coming into play, but there's another material out there called hemp that may even be better than graphene, more plentiful, and far more cheap than um, the standards that they've been trying to exploit recently to... Uh, Get the technology up to par. This actually supercapacitors are basically, I'll give you a little bit of the definition right off here of Wikipedia. Supercapacitor electrodes are generally thin coatings applied and electrically connected to conductive metallic uh, current collector. They must have good conductivity, high temperature stability, long term chemical stability, inertness, in other words, high corrosion resistance. Other requirements include environmental friendliness and low cost. So that's where hemp comes into being. So uh, the most commonly used electrode material for supercapacitor is carbon. Carbon, okay. So that's typically what goes on with graphite, graphite, graphene, carbon nanotubes. That's typically what's been going on. But uh, so basically what it is, it's a type of high storage energy, energy, uh, fast charge and discharge. So in other words... Uh, you can basically pull into a gas station if with a supercapacitor car, you know, versus the normal batteries. If the batteries can actually store as much electricity, you see that's becoming like the the stumbling block. But now they're getting over some of that, and actually hemp is going to be coming to the rescue. But say, for instance, you got a car with electrical batteries that have a 300 mile range or a 200 mile range, it wouldn't be such a big deal if you could pull into a charging station and charge them up in five minutes. You know, versus hours, and with supercapacitors, that will be the capability. So it can transform the way you know future electronics are powered. So in other words, it could be your laptop, it could be your vehicle, it could be your home, it could be anything. And considering that we have the sun, the biggest energy source in the world, there's no limit to what electricity can can do. Because right now, um, solar panels are getting far more efficient. Even the best ones, I think, now are probably maybe 10% efficient. But when you get them up to about 90% efficient, solar panels are actually going to be probably the main way of collecting energy, really, probably. But they've been finding out that they can use the fibers from one part of the hemp plant, and it's turned out that it's even better than graphene. Uh, it's it's cheaper. It's more environmentally friendly. It's Well, it's plentiful. It's easy to easy to harvest. It's easy to get. Um, it says the key advantage of using uh, the hemp electrodes is that they're made from bio waste using a simple process and are much, much, much cheaper than graphene. So it's something that's coming out. Maybe, you know, I, you know, I know there's the powers that be, but <laughs> are into one thing or another. But, you know, cheap energy can also mean this. You know, that problem like where I said the oil companies are moving into water, water, the water area. If hemp can actually provide storage capability through the fibers of the plant in lieu of not using uh, graphene, well, if you can have cheap energy storage and also cheap energy uh, uh, collection through solar panels that are highly efficient, well, with that energy, you can also um, 
purify any water that needs to be purified, which would be there'd be plenty of potable drinking water for a population that could be many times larger than the population of the Earth as it is. Actually, if you want to have a little factoid out there, you know, the population of Bangladesh, the Bangladesh, a very small, tiny area, is actually larger than the population of Bangladesh is actually more than the population of the entire country of Russia, which which goes across nine time zones. So there's plenty of room on this earth. It's just that we we lack the energy to uh, manufacture and purify the water and provide ourselves with electricity. And you know, with this graphene uh, breakthrough, basically it's not a graphene; it's a capacitor breakthrough. Maybe even the White House will get involved in this and start planting a little bit more on the White House lawn that would be a little bit more useful. I'm sure Bill Clinton would have approved of this. <laughs> but, um, you know, it looks like this technology is coming on very strong. Uh, it says the, the hemp plant can pack as much energy and power as graphene, which long was touted as the model of material for supercapacitors. So it's a lot cheaper, though. It's a lot cheaper. So... You know, what you probably see, this is the main drawback to the electric cars. It takes too long to freaking charge them up. And the other thing is with supercapacitors, like um, if you put a capacitor in conjunction with like the way it is today, a capacitor will not store that much energy, but supercapacitors will store more energy like a battery, right? But it's more expensive due to the graphene that's expensive to produce, but it looks like the hemp can produce it. Uh, you can get it a lot more cheaper. You can get it a lot cheaper through the hemp fibers, this particular part of the plant. But the thing is, uh, with the supercapacitors, it's um, it also helps with the acceleration of the electrical vehicles or any any type of engines that use electricity, because it doesn't put a the supercapacitors can discharge very quickly, very rapidly, unlike when you're putting that kind of strain on a battery that'll shorten a battery's life. So with a supercapacitor, um, you know, it's like you could design things where you don't have to, it'll be a simpler design of the electrical vehicle, in other words, because it could just say, you know, on-demand energy without any kind of complex, um, you know, uh, computer work, computers that need it need to, uh, you know, f figure out how to put the energy to the electric motor when you step on the pedal, you know. I know Tesla's cars are fairly expensive because um, they have to be, there's a lot of onboard electronics involved, but when you have a super capacitor, um, it simplifies things greatly. Now, the uh, traditional way, like I said, was graphene, but what's going on now, it's coming out that Hemp is going to be a much, much better viable alternative to graphene. And um, they also found that when they heated the fibers for 24 hours uh, at a little over 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then blasted the resulting material with intense heat, they could uh, exfoliate into carbon nano sheets. So in other words, um, it's a very, very, very simple process to get the same type of carbon nano sheets out of hemp that was before quite a bit more expensive so but you know I always say that the powers of be that are you know resistant to this but it seems like if the technology is out there and once it gets out there it's going to get out there forever and uh, with hemp it seems like hemp's coming to the rescue in a lot of different ways not only is it a food, not only is it a material that for building or replace plastics, not only is it a protein, not only is it uh, something that can be used, burned as fuel through the hempoline or the gasoline or the um, hemp oil, but now it's coming to the rescue as a viable replace, cheap replacement than graphene, but it's probably on par or even better than the graphene used in the supercapacitor so I don't know if the White House is going to get involved in this but they should and they should actually plant the stuff on a lawn and make uh, get a little return on the investment for all that lawn space they got there you know so anyway figure to put this out here that's a that's a pretty promising thing that's coming up because supercapacitors are the main reason are the main thing that's actually going to bring the electrical electric vehicle into mass production it's the battery limitation and the electrical storage limitations that 
are the problem with you and you know the, the time it takes to charge up an electric vehicle is really the limitation on electric vehicles it's not the motors it's not everything else it's storing up the energy super capacitors are going to change that but with this um, type of hemp fiber they're using in place of graphene uh, it seems like now they can make the um, super capacitors much cheaper and they're also going to be very much in environmentally and friendly friendly uh, and much you know like I said cheaper low cost so that is very very promising you know the problem is I don't know how long it's going to take to get into production but the technology is here now and uh, that does spell the end of crude oil for a viable fuel uh, crude oil is probably going to go the way of salt Salt, actually, during the time of the Roman Empire, was the most valuable commodity there was. Why? Because salt could preserve foods and meats, and that was actually the, food, the fuel for the, um, the manpower, or, you know, for the legions that basically kept law and order throughout the empire. And it was almost like the oil and lifeblood of the industry, because everything was based upon human power more or animal power and it required that the foods needed to be preserved which is actually the fuel for the humans and the animals and things that was actually the transportation system for what was going on back 2000 years ago now today it's basically crude oil but it's going to get replaced by probably the sun's energy and the storage devices that will be uh, storing the sun's energy are going to be supercapacitors and it looks like the supercapacitors now have gotten a new process where they can be made much cheaper and more environmentally friendly through the fibers of hemp so you may see electrical vehicles that could be charged up um, in a matter of minutes the cell phone maybe could be charged up in a matter of seconds or under a minute versus hours and um, that's going to revolutionize things everywhere because um, that is actually the whole problem and you know with supercapacitors they can be discharged very quickly too so you can have you know the power and torque of an electric motor that draws upon a battery a normal battery would destroy that battery over a period of time because it's too it's rough to actually pull a lot of amps out of a battery very quickly but with a supercapacitor is no problem so hemp's coming to the rescue in many different ways Let's just hope that, you know, the powers that be, the Rothschilds or whatever the hell it is out there, is stopping all this garbage. I know, like, you got the, the younger Rothschild out there sailing with his plastic bottled boat and all this kind of garbage. Um, you know, making a big statement about the environment, but it's all a big show. And I tell you the truth, uh, we do have the technology already at our hands. And it should be out there. It should be out there as fast as possible. You know, if they put this kind of money into this kind of in this, into this plant as they put into uh, the tarp and bailing out the big banks and stuff like that, we already would have had a global economic recovery for all peoples, and we'd already be having next to free energy, which would be a global industrial revolution, and we'd be greening the earth at the same time. But no, it's got to go into the banksters' hands. You know, that's what happens. So. Get politically active. This looks like it's, this is not a rumor. This is actually a fact that hemp can now, there's certain fibers in a hemp plant that can actually replace the expensive graphene, which is the limiting factor on uh, supercapacitors. And uh, it seems to work even better than graphene.